Good day, everyone. I'm going to talk about harp seals. These are a sustainable natural resource that we can use them for food, health, and for industrial purposes. In Canada, particularly in Newfoundland and Labrador, as well as Arctic Canada, we have five different species of seals. The most prevalent ones are harp seals. The quota for the harvest of harp seals is 400,000 per year, but only a fraction of this is taken due to restrictions uh, because of the uh, Marine Mammal Act in the United States and other uh, market variables, variables and barriers that are there. Uh, as I mentioned, the seals come to the waters of the Newfoundland and Labrador, and then they go on the ice packs to deliver their offsprings that upon birth they have white coat. Here I have shown some seal fishery. They are basically hunted by using a high power rifle. And uh, this is the boat that we had used in order to basically follow up the freshness quality indicators of the seal meat and its byproducts. Uh, you see also the pelt that has been carved out by using a special tools. And here we have Dr. Dunaisky, who was on the boat from my lab doing some of the work. The components of the seal are basically the pelt, we have the meat, and the subcutaneous fat or blubber that is quite important as a source of omega-3 fatty acids. And as you can see, the carcass components, after taking the blubber, blubber is about 29-30%, uh, and the viscera about 18 kilos per hundred kilo and pelt or is about eight percent the dressed carcass is 43.6 percent so uh, we can basically separate these in an appropriate way for use now in this slide i have shown the uses of different components for example the pelt could be used for fur, for leather or gelatin production. The blubber is a good source of oil for food, pharmaceutical and basically supplement, as well as some industrial applications. The meat, we can use them for food, in, in for preparation of food related products, as well as a seal meal. The organs are also quite important and they may be used for specialty products or uh, we can use them for food. However, here one has to make sure that uh, the organs, as many other organ meats, are well taken care of in terms of the potential of having collected toxic materials over the period in the older seals. Now, here I'm showing the meat and the meat has a dark color, a moisture content of about 75%. The lipid in the meat is about 1 to 2%, and it is very lean, and it is very dark because it may have up to 5% myoglobin, which is making it a very good source of iron. It is also having a large content of vitamin B12. And you can see here, I have given MSSM, that is mechanically uh, separated seal meat, and then comparison with the beef, pork, and mechanically uh, separated chicken meat and cod are given there. And in all aspects, seal meat compares well with all of those. Here are the salamis we produced. Uh, we found that the texture, if we used seal as such, it wasn't going to be very good. It would be very livery and not what is expected of salami. Therefore, we 
combined it with mechanically separated chicken meat. And you can see the products there in terms of the difference in color. These actually, we had them in the market for a little while in Newfoundland, but then uh, there was not followed anymore. Uh, so we can use the meat uh, for production of uh, food products, but also we can remove the color from it by a process that we call hydrolysis. And this is an enzyme assisted process where we can get a product, seal protein hydrolysate, that is almost colorless, uh, white off actually in color. And it has very interesting properties that makes it appealing for use. It has antioxidant potential. It is having uh, ACE inhibition, and therefore it acts as an antihypertensive material. It is good for immune enhancing and antimicrobial properties, and it has high water uh, absorption capacity. And this means that we can use it as a phosphate alternative in processed meats. And we can use this very readily in uh, acidic media such as carbonated, uh, carbonated beverages. And uh, from that point of view, this is an ideal thing for food aid packages that we can proceed with it because we provide those who are suffering from hunger with the water and we can sprinkle these powders into the water and they have a readily absorbable source of uh, amino acids that is required by their uh, suffering body. Now, the blubber is under the skin and it is around 29%, uh, as I have mentioned before, 29, 30%. And it is mainly composed of neutral lipids, triglycerides. In, uh, one thing that is very important is that, uh, I just mentioned it here, seal milk is very high in lipid, 43%. And we have done actually some work with that. The pelt still has some residual fat on it, and viscera is also uh, very low in fat. And the meat or the muscles, as I showed before, is quite lean, between 1% and 2% lipid. Now, uh, we can basically process seal blubber the same way that we do that for uh, different vegetable oils, but at the beginning, we have a process of cooking and rendering that denatures the protein, and then we separate it, and uh, then we go through the required processes of degumming, refining, bleaching, and deodorization. And we may do also winterization in order to remove uh, the uh, other highly saturated components. So uh, this is something that is very important, and in fact, this was a process that we had there uh, they were using it, but we went through the refining processes and uh, we were the first to produce, I shouldn't say necessarily the first, but we were those who revitalized this for use in the, uh, in the encapsulation and encapsulated products, as well as microencapsulated one for use in food. Now, this is the triglyceride molecule that I have shown here. You see that we have a middle position and two terminal position. And if we, I, I will make use of this later on in my presentation. Here I have compared the fatty acid composition of the seal, harp seal, with two other species of seal. And as you see, it is having uh, docosa hexaenoic acid or DHA 22 6 and I cause a pentaenoic acid or EPA 25. But in seal, we have also a rich uh, source. We have it as a rich source of DPA or do cause a pentaenoic acid. And this is much more than what we see in any other uh, sources except in the human milk. We have high DPA. This is important to note. Now, the way they are occurring in the triglyceride molecule, just look at the very last column. We find that in seal blubber oil, 
these polyunsaturated omega-3 fatty acids are occurring mainly in the terminal position but in Manhattan oil which is a fish oil it is mainly in the middle position and some in the third position or SN3 position in terms of the absorption and other properties these are very important to consider and uh, basically all times they use uh, seal blubber for uh, fuel for use in uh, plants to prevent corrosion for treating leather and uh, obviously one can use them uh, in uh, as a feed in animals and they were a margarine component in order to give the texture they hydrogenated it and used it in margarine production uh, but now we use them as a pharmaceutical item and it is very important source to consider because of its richness in DPA as well as the way the positional distribution of the fatty acids are in the triglyceride molecule. Now these are some of the products from the pelt and uh, you can see that one can use them for production of many materials not just only uh, from the pelt as such as a fur but also we can use them in production of leather and to a lesser extent we can use them for gelatin formation. Here is me on a seal coat and uh, you can see that it is quite nice and warm. Uh, obviously we can produce from seal skin. Obviously these are the ones that are not good for leather production and uh, for fur production. We can basically hydrolyze them properly and form gelatin and the gelatin if we compare it with the typical values is having a good amino acid composition and is a, a very important source that could be used. Now the organs of the seal, the, we have the internal organs, heart, kidney, liver and viscera and uh, these are uh, quite important in terms of their uh, protein content and you can see also their weights uh, and uh, obviously the external organs uh, the penis for example has been sold to the Chinese market for a good value or at least it was at some point uh, so uh, the viscera we were able to use the viscera for uh, producing enzymes from each kilo about 12 grams of it and we use these for uh, basically uh, production of cheese in a continuous manner. Now mucopolysaccharides from the connective tissues and the cartilages we can produce mucopolysaccharides which is a sugar uh, type material the polysaccharide and this has its own uh, benefits in terms of treating uh, arthritis and osteoarthritis in terms of use for cosmetic and skincare products and as well as for wound healing. So uh, th these are important products and uh, I'm showing these to basically illustrate again every component of the seal harvest uh, that we have had could be used for production either in food, in pharmaceuticals or for uh, industries uh, such as the fur, leather, and other industries and uh, we if we hunt the seals we have to fully utilize them and we have provided a good recipe how we can do so in this slide you can see some of the seals in the ocean sciences department at memorial university we use these in some of the studies we did together with the late dini renoff some years ago and if you are interested in any of these uh, type of work. I have gathered them some years ago in a book called Seal Fishery and Product Development. If you are interested, you can contact me by email fshahidi at man.ca and I have a number of copies that you can purchase them directly. Uh, and in association with that, uh, we have a, a society called International Society for Nutraceuticals and Functional Foods that I basically founded it in 2008 and its companion journal, Journal of Food Bioactives, is very interested 
in including all types of bioactives from marine sources as well as plant and terrestrial sources. With that, I thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye and have a good time for the rest of the conference. Bye-bye.